What is going on, guys? It's Artist Touch Painting. As always, your favorite artist, Jesse, here. I just wanted to jump on here real quick. First, yes, I am driving. Safety first. Um, so apologies if I'm not looking at the camera too much. I'm gonna try to focus on staying alive today. Um, but I wanted to pop on and talk about something that just hit me. Um, I was thinking about this time of year. As a contractor or a painter, um, this time of year is tough, you know, when it just turns into fall, um, but you still have a little bit of, uh, you know, warm weather. Um, you know, you have warm weather, but then you have the cooler days. It's not completely transitioned over yet. Um, and a lot of people that didn't hit you up in the summertime are now hitting you up trying to get all their exterior work done. Um, I don't know if this is a common problem with other people or... Um, you know, depending on the region that you're in, but in my region, it seems like the weather is not consistent ever, except for summer. Um, it's brutally hot. And then in the winter, it's brutally cold, even though we don't have a whole lot of snow. So right here during this time of year, um, it's October 1st and the weather is pretty nice today. I think we're only going to be in the seventies, but nevertheless, a lot of people start contacting you trying to get exterior work done. Um, and that's great. You go on those estimates, um, you try to seal the deal in those jobs, um, depending on the size or how much that they want done exterior wise. I personally end up having to turn them away or try to gear it more towards, we have to set this up for spring. Um, so for instance, my situation right now is I have two jobs that um, are having exterior remodeling done and then I'm coming in to do some paint work afterwards. Um, both of these jobs have been booked for months. Um, the, the company that I got the work from, they were super busy all summer. So they're just now getting started on this job. Um, they're about a week in. So I had a little dead spot where I'm trying to fill in the gaps. And um, now it's time for me to start thinking about when I'm gonna get to those jobs. Um, I was lucky and I was blessed to have gotten more work during that time to fill those gaps. But two of those ended up being exteriors and one of them got rained out for half of this week. So now I'm headed over there to try to finish that job up so I can then get over to the next one. So this time of year is really tricky because you wanna take the jobs, you don't wanna turn them away, right? Um, especially if that's really all that's coming in is these exteriors. Um, and granted, there are ways around it. You can work um, with paint in colder, colder temperatures, um, you know, using extenders and things like that. Um, but still, I personally don't like being out in the cold if I don't have to be. Um, I don't like subjecting my crew to that either if I don't have to. But if that's the work that's available, you take it and you do it um, up until the point that you can um, also, as far as scheduling, you know, for me, I don't know if anybody else has this issue where you get a lot of work, right? You get a bunch of work, you got everything all stacked up. You're trying to figure out what jobs work the best. Um, personally, I try to work off a of first come first serve basis. And for me, what that means is if they say yes, we set up a date for me to come back out, sign those contracts, do the color consultation which I have a video on that. If anybody's interested, I'll leave the link down below. And then we set the schedule. So the deposit is gonna seal the deal on, you know, that block of time that we decide to start the job on. And it's tough when you have certain jobs that end up getting rained out, but you have something booked the next week. Um, so that's always a struggle for me is the scheduling. You know, I try my best to put jobs in a certain order. Um, you know, if I have a customer that's not in a rush and they're willing to wait, I tell them, well, listen, I can fit you somewhere in this week or that week because I have an exterior that has been rained out and it's gonna extend the time that I'm there and also push back the time that I am gonna be able to get to yours. Um, in most cases, people are okay with that as long as they know that their deposit has secured them next in line after set date. Um, but if anybody has any suggestions on you know, good tactics for, for scheduling jobs, um, you know, any hints or tips, I'm all ears, hit the comments with those. Um, I'm always willing to learn. Um, 
But yeah, I just wanted to pop on here real quick and do a quick think out loud, if you will, about scheduling as a contractor, especially during this season where you don't want to say no to work and you don't want to um, subject you and your crew out into conditions that may not provide you the capability to give a good quality job. Also, I wanted to point out that I don't know if a lot of other guys do this um, because there's also times a year where I hear a lot of guys talking about, you know, they slow down or they don't have work. Um, granted, there is the COVID situation right now, so that's understandable. But, um, you know, I feel like when I hit a dead spot or I'm coming up to the end of my scheduled jobs, um, I start to panic because for me, my job is to keep my crew working, to keep my guys working. Um, even if that means that I have to sacrifice, you know, going to work on the jobs with them or on jobs by myself. Um, I want to make sure that they stay working. So when I see I'm about to hit a dead spot, um, I kind of go in panic mode. But what I do is I try to go back in my history of estimates that I've done recently, um, sometimes even ones that have, you know, gone on for months. Um, you know, a lot of times I get real busy and I don't always, you know, reach back out to a customer after I submit an estimate to them. And I kind of just figure they don't want the job done or whatever, you know, when, when work is bountiful and you have plenty of work, you kind of just let those ones slide. But in times like this, where you hit a dead spot, it might be worth it just to reach back out, you know, hit them with a message um, via email or text, call, whichever they prefer. Um, I usually go the email route because then they're going to be able to see that estimate as they open it. I'll just forward it right from that same original email with the contract and, uh, you know, just ask, you know, what they thought, how they um, feel about the estimate. If they have any questions or concerns, I leave them my personal number. Um, and if I reach out to a few of those, a lot of times, a few of them end up messaging back and saying, oh yeah, we just got busy with such and such, life happened, blah, 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 we're still interested. And then it's you're essentially still building off of a previous relationship that you started, so they're already familiar and they're already comfortable. They might wanna tweak a few things. Um, and a lot of times, just the simple fact that you reach back out when other, customer, or other uh, contractors aren't reaching back out to them, they see value in that. They see that you're serious and you're professional and um, it gets them to rethink, well, you know what, maybe we do still want to get that done. Since he reached back out, maybe, you know, maybe that's like a sign, maybe we should do it. Um, and a lot of times they end up saying, you know what, we also have this, that, and the other thing. Can you handle this? Can you do that? Can you add that? Like, and then I end up with more work than I thought. And then I'm now I'm back into the mode where I feel like I have too much and then scheduling's an issue again. So it's just like I have this constant battle with when I have a lot of work, scheduling it properly, um, handling weather conditions and transitions, um, you know, seasonal things. And then when there isn't a lot of work, you know, panic mode, handling a panic mode. And then when a lot comes back in, I'm it's almost like a full circle. It's just a, a constant struggle. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. If anybody else has any experience with something like this or anything that I'm saying, please hit the comments and let me know. Um, I will respond. Um, and hopefully you can teach me something. Um, but yeah, that was just my thoughts for today. Um, if you found any value, if you learned anything, um, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, it really does help the video circulate and get more people to view it. Um, I'm trying to teach as many people as I can out here. Um, and you guys can teach me too. So please subscribe. Also hit that notification bell. You know, when you subscribe and you hit that notification bell, you're going to know when the new videos come out. Um, I'm going to try to do a lot more straight talks like this if you guys like it. Um, but until then, this is Artist Touch Painting, your favorite artist, Jesse. See you soon.